Our final presenter for the day is uh, Save the Rivers intern, Chelsea Broughton. And Chelsea was born and raised in Western New York, but came north to receive a bachelor's degree, degree in pre-law at SUNY Canton. In 2017, she began working at the Mena Anthony Common Nature Center as an environmental educator, where her passion for conservation took off. Since then, Chelsea has been involved in the education community and worked at the Student Conservation Association as a conservation steward in 2000. 20. Chelsea currently works at Save the River as an education intern. So Chelsea, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, John. And thank you, Lauren, for the Lita Trap update. That was very informative. Um, so I'll share my screen here. All right, so just for quality purposes and my internet, I'm going to turn my video off during the presentation, but I will turn it back on during the Q&A. So, hi everyone. My name is Chelsea Braun and I am currently the education intern at Save the River. Today, I will be discussing some of the opportunities that I've had during my time here. First, my slide will turn. I will discuss the experience that Lauren, our program manager, and I had while teaching two classes of ninth grade students from Alexandria Bay. I will also be briefly covering the other projects that I have been fortunate enough to be involved with, like tabling out events and outreach, our fishing line recycling station work with the Thousand Islands Association, and creating educational content on social media. Back in September, Emily Dore, a science teacher from Alexandria Bay School, decided that her students were going to be working on a research project about mussels. After a few days of careful planning and preparation, Lauren and I were able to put together a presentation about a few different topics, Save the River, Freshwater Mussels, and the Grass River Project. We started our presentation by discussing what Save the River is and what we do, and some of the basics, which included what's included in the Great Lakes watershed and facts about the St. Lawrence River. We then transitioned talking about what a native mussel is, what they do in the environment, and a little bit about their reproduction process. We then compared that information with what an invasive mussel is, how fast they reproduce, and their impact on the ecosystem. We also created a timeline with a brief history of native freshwater mussels. We began prior to the 1800s with the use of mussels by indigenous people for a food source and building materials. We then highlighted the brink of extinction due to the booming button industry during the industrial revolution, shared early environmentalism and more sustainable practices, and ended the, in, with the introduction of invasive zebra and quagga mussels. We wrapped our presentation by giving an overview of the Grass River Project and the partnership between Save the River, the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe Environment Division, the New York State Museum, and New York State's Dep Department of Environmental Conservation. And Lauren briefly talked about that um, in her session. So pictured here are the samples that we received from the New York State Museum that we were able to take into the school for the students. Some of the samples include the native Eastern Elliptio, pink heel splitter, fragile paper shell, and Eastern lamp mussel. We also acquired some of the invasive mussel samples. On the left-hand side, you will see a native freshwater mussel covered in invasive zebra and quagga mussels. With this sample, we were able to ask students how they thought the invasives would impact the system and those living in it. On the right-hand side, you'll see some of just the regular invasive samples of the quagga and zebra mussels. These students were able to use all of these samples hands-on to then form research questions and collect data to support their findings. After students had collected their data, we were also able to connect with Dr. Denise Mayer, a malacologist from the New York State Museum via Zoom. The teachers and students were then able to ask Dr. Meyer questions about what the New York State Museum does, what her work involves, 
what it's like working in the field, and more in-depth questions about muscles. Several of the students came prepared and had questions beforehand, such as what factors impact muscle population growth, what wildlife eat them, and how pollution affects muscles. With the students' research project coming to an end, their teachers and Save the River staff surprised them with one last muscle-related adventure, a boat ride on the good old St. Lawrence River. On our tour, we were able to take the students into the field and see what a muscle habitat really looks like. Here, they actually saw the impact that muscles were having on a habitat from the clear waters from filter feeding and the leftover shells from past meals from wildlife. Lauren and I were able to really drive the importance of balance in an ecosystem as well. Students were able to identify what would happen if balance was lost in the ecosystem and the butterfly effect that it would have. Along our way, the students were also able to play some games of I Spy and River Bingo to win some Save the River swag along the way. They were really excited about that and a lot of them wore their t-shirts to school the next day. Um, Lauren also spoke briefly about common turns and the navigation cells that Save the River has for their turn hatching as we passed a navigation cell on our travels upstream. The captain and his crew even pitched in some facts about the St. Lawrence River, some of the shipwrecks that we passed along the way, and Eel Bay on our way back to land. We then ended the students' boat tour with a pop quiz about everything they had learned throughout their research project. The kids had a great time and learned a lot along the way. Their favorite part, I think we all know, is getting out of the classroom and out on the water to learn. This experience was not without obstacles though. Obviously, we had the coronavirus to consider, meaning we had to figure out a way to get all the students safely on the water. And we also had issues with participation in the classroom. For example, one of our classes was very excited and asked a lot of questions. Even after their class was over, they were still coming up to us trying to get answers. The other class, however, wasn't as interested and a little more hesitant to participate. Overall, this experience led to new opportunities with our muscle education. We have been able to build a muscle-based curriculum for high school students, and we have contacted new locations to expand where our interactive muscle booklets are available. While my internship at Save the River focuses on teaching middle and high school students about muscles, I have also had some side projects. I was fortunate enough to accompany Lauren to some tabling events like Autumn Festival on Wellesley Island, and boo at the zoo at the New York State Zoo at Watertown. At these events, we were able to educate hundreds of people about invasive species, highlighting zebra and quagga mussels, Eurasian water milfoil, rusty crayfish, water chestnut, spotted lanternfly, and the emerald ash borer. We had also discussed with the public how to report the invasive species, and if possible, how to properly dispose of them. These events led to an idea for an interactive invasive species look project. I started working on this and we're seeking funding to print and publish it. Another side project that I have been working on is the fishing line recycling stations. Through a partnership with Thousand Islands Association, we have been able to place 10 fishing line recycling stations on the American side along the St. Lawrence River at local marinas, boat launches, and fishing spots. This project emphasizes the dangers that monofilament fishing line poses on an aquatic ecosystem. Some of these dangers include entangling birds, fish, turtles, and other aquatic wildlife, affecting water and soil quality, and the monofilament breaking down into microplastics. In my downtime from all of these projects, I was able to manage another side project, trying to reach a younger audience with educational content on social media. As we all know, it's difficult to get teenagers and even young adults passionate about the environment. However, they are passionate about social media and being on their cell phones. Any teacher could tell you that. With this in mind, we decided to start creating fun and memorable educational videos about all things related to the St. Lawrence River and the surrounding ecosystems. Many of you may be familiar with some of these videos as we call them Fun Fact Friday. And yes, I am usually recognized in public as the Fun Fact Friday girl. We also started to build an educational platform on TikTok and YouTube Shorts since the, these social media platforms 
have become much more popular since the pandemic started. So far, we've gotten a great response and engagement from our videos. I'm so excited to create more content throughout the duration of my internship. My time at Save the River has provided me with an opportunity like no other. From assisting with conservation efforts to writing curriculum and content and presenting it here at this conference, this internship has provided me with the knowledge and experience I need to move forward in the education community and my career. The memories that I have made here during my time will be memories that I cherish forever. I wanted to take this time to thank John, Lauren, and the rest of the staff at Save the River for giving me this opportunity and helping me grow as an environmentalist and an educator. I'd also like to thank the community for their continued support and taking time out of their busy weekend to be here. Thank you. And with that, I will be taking questions if there are any. Thanks, Chelsea. Uh, I'm just going to take this moment to say nice talk. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so one of the questions that came in, again, if anybody has questions, you can put them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, one of the questions that came in is, what are your plans for the future? Um, I plan on continuing as an environmental educator, will that be here in New York or wherever in the country. Um, I'm hopefully going to get back into parks and just work on continuing to spread the knowledge. Nice. Um, I don't see any other questions, but thank you. Thank you. Chelsea, thank you. Thank you very much. That was a great presentation. Uh, you know, it feels like that you've been a member of our staff forever. We are going to miss you when you're gone. Uh, but I, I think this is a great way to close the Winter Environmental Conference, because as I was sitting here listening to Chelsea, it became pretty obvious to me that uh, we just heard about Save the River's mission to restore, preserve, and protect the Upper St. Lawrence River now and for generations to come through advocacy, education, research, and stewardship. She hit on all those issues, and these are ongoing work that Save the River and our staff does every day, 365 days a year. Uh, we couldn't do that without the support of our sponsors, uh, our members, uh, our board. Uh, so we want to thank everyone very much for everything they do for us. Thank you for sponsoring and making Winter Environmental Conference a possibility in its 33rd year. And we hope you have a great weekend and we will see you soon on the river. <laughs>